What are the membership guidelines and why will we be voting to retire them? In 2001, delegates from General Conference and Mennonite Church, two national denominations of Mennonites, voted to merge and create a new denomination, Mennonite Church USA. Alongside a new set of bylaws, the membership guidelines document laid out the polity that would guide this new church. Polity is another way of talking about policy or the structure for decision making. The version approved in 2001 included a third section entitled Clarification on Some Issues Related to Homosexuality and Membership. This section included some prohibitions on pastors officiating same-sex weddings, but also said the guidelines, along with the entire church structure, would be reviewed in 2007. 2007 came and went, but a review of the membership guidelines never happened. Instead, in 2013, an administrative update of the guidelines was issued, although delegates never voted on it. Then came 2015. Tensions were high. The Supreme Court had legalized same-sex marriage a few years earlier. Society was continuing to polarize. Advocacy groups staged demonstrations, and a divided delegate body met to discern the work of the church. Delegates approved four resolutions and two church-wide statements at that convention, and two of them solidified the tensions in the church. At that year's convention, delegates passed two different resolutions. A forbearance in the midst of differences acknowledged the diversity of thought and practice across the church and sought to honor congregational and area conference discernment. Then, a resolution on the status of the membership guidelines said that the membership guidelines adopted by the delegates in 2001 and updated in 2013 shall continue to serve Mennonite Church USA as the guiding document for questions regarding church membership and same-sex relationships slash marriages. These two resolutions were in tension. Some area conferences, following the forbearance resolution, bless their pastors to officiate same-sex weddings when their congregations discern this response for their pastors. Other area conferences do not. This tension creates some instability within our system, particularly as we think about pastoral accountability. Yet, it does acknowledge and respect the authority given to area conferences in our MCUSA polity in matters of credentialing pastors. In 2019, delegates were asked to respond to two statements. First, a two-year biblical discernment process culminating in a delegate decision on the status of the MCUSA membership guidelines in 2021 is important to my constituents. 69% of delegates agreed or strongly agreed. Second, my constituents will give time and energy to a biblical discernment process that focuses on the status of the membership guidelines. Only 43% agreed or strongly agreed. In response, the executive board of MCUSA convened a diverse task force to address the membership guidelines. The task force recommendation was the membership guidelines not continue to serve as active polity in Mennonite Church USA. The rationale of some task force members was to recognize harm done to the LGBTQ community by the membership guidelines. For others, it was an acknowledgement that the guidelines were not functioning effectively within our structure. The executive board considered their work and has created this resolution to retire the membership guidelines. Now delegates will have an opportunity to respond to this recommendation at a special delegate assembly in May 2022. 
The resolution of the executive board says that we retire the membership guidelines as the active polity in Mennonite Church USA. This raises some questions. If the guidelines are retired, what will be standard for membership in MCUSA? MCUSA's bylaws define membership expectations. Congregations establish the criteria for an individual becoming a member of the local church, and area conferences establish the criteria for congregations becoming members of the conference. Does retiring the membership guidelines mean that pastors will be forced to officiate same-sex weddings? No. Pastors and congregations will continue to be able to discern which marriages they will be involved with. ACC has a congregational polity, which means that local congregations are largely free to do their own interpretation of what ministry looks like in their particular context. Does retiring the membership guidelines mean that area conferences will have to credential LGBTQ pastors? No. Area conferences are responsible for determining the criteria for extending ministerial credentials. MCUSA will respect the credentialing decisions of the conference. Within ACC's congregational polity, the discernment of diverse congregations is respected and recognized. When delegates gather together in Kansas City 2022, they'll take up this resolution. So take some time now to talk with your congregation, to study and to pray together, and ask for God's wisdom as we prepare to discern how to best live faithfully together in the midst of our diversity.